The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Well, welcome back to True News. I'm Rick Wiles. The struggle to expose the false identity of Barack Hussein Obama, also known as Barry Satoro to his close friends, well, it's like having a conversation with the Mad Hatter in Alice in Wonderland. Reality doesn't matter. Up is down. In is out. Red is blue. His supporters in the news media are adamant in not intelligently discussing the mountain of discrepancies in Obama's life, such as his fraudulent use of a Connecticut Social Security number. Well, another expert has stepped forward to declare that Obama's long-form birth certificate image posted on a government website, whitehouse.gov, is a fraudulent document created with Adobe software. Mara Zabest is a nationally recognized computer expert, and she recently told Dr. Jerome Corsi at WorldNet Daily that the, quote, PDF file released by the White House contains evidence of manipulation, suggesting that one or more forgers utilized existing Hawaiian birth certificates to assemble fraudulently for Barack Obama a document the president presented to the world as authentic. Mara Zabest is on the telephone, Mara. Welcome to True News. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, Mara, uh, before we get into your analysis of the image, uh, give our audience a brief description of your professional background that makes you qualified to analyze the birth certificate image on whitehouse.gov. Okay. Um, well, I'm for 11 years now, I've been a contributing author and technical editor for many, many books. Uh, there, a dozen of them have been for Adobe software. Um, I, in addition to that, I've also worked in a printing company, um, and I've done work for schools, uh, teaching uh, the staff, students. Uh, some, in fact, I uh, was guest uh, instructor for uh, a person's class for the Photoshop software, um, and uh, have done uh, numerous things in graphic design as well as uh, printing and marketing and stuff like that to uh, work with these programs. Okay, so you've been a contributing writer or editor to dozens of books about Adobe software. Correct. All right, that's good enough for me. Now let's let's take a look um, at the Obama birth certificate image within hours after it was posted on the White House website, which is an official government uh, agency website, which means if you put something uh, fraudulent on that website, you have violated federal laws. Within hours, Mara, of that uh, of, of of Obama releasing his birth certificate, I was inundated with with emails from people, including listeners of this program, uh, who are employed in um, design. Uh, graphic design agencies and advertising agencies. Uh, I was inundated with emails from people saying, "Rick, this this is, I can't believe what what I'm seeing. Th th this is a this is a complete hoax." I mean, within hours, I yeah. was getting well, the emails. Uh, yeah, I, and I don't doubt it because within seconds after looking at the document, I could see that it was a hoax. I mean, it just didn't take me long. I, I kept expecting, you know, I, I actually got the morning that it was released. I got a call from a friend of mine. Uh, she actually woke me up very early and said, early for me at least, and said, um, you won't believe what he, you know, Obama's doing. He's releasing us long form, and if anybody can tell if it's real or fake, I know it's you. You've got to look at this thing, you know. So I'm like wiping the sleep out of my eyes and going, okay, give me a few minutes. Let me download it and see what I can see. I actually expected to, you know, have some sort of, you know, a search that would take, you know, a while to see if there was any clues, you know, whether it was legitimate or not. But within seconds after opening it up, I'm just, like, stunned. I'm, I'm, my mouth is hanging open. I can't believe how easy it is to spot everything that's wrong with this document. That so are, are you saying that it's actually an, a, a very amateurish, uh, fraudulent 
Oh, document? Oh, 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 absolutely. And beyond amateurish. I mean, I just, you know, I, I, anybody that's sitting there trying to put out something that looks real, I can't believe the mistakes that they made. All right, so, so the CIA didn't do it. An intelligence agency didn't do it. Uh, the Bilderberg guys didn't do it uh, because this is such a sloppy job that uh, those, those uh, agencies and those organizations wouldn't want to be connected with something so sloppy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and, and let me just tell you a little story. You know, when I opened it up, uh, one of the first things I saw, I opened it up in Illustrator first. I, I, I know that um, Illustrator is one of those Adobe programs that can read all of the data that's embedded in a PDF file. Uh, so I went to Illustrator first, uh, looked at the layers palette, couldn't believe that I'm seeing layers. Layers in itself, uh, for listeners that might not be familiar with graphic software, but any any image only should have, if it has not been edited, should only have one layer. And uh, it's generally flat. And any indication that there's more than one is an indication, you know, that it's been edited. Um, so I'm seeing all of these layers in the layers palette. And just to confirm, you know, that I'm not crazy of what I'm seeing, I uh, called up a friend of mine who I know works with uh, uh, Photoshop and Adobe software uh, extensively in his job. He lives in the Southern California area, and I call him up, and I don't tell him what he's going to see. I just ask him, you know, I send him a link to the White House uh, gov site, and I said, I sent you an email. Uh, do me a favor, download Obama's birth certificate and open it up in Illustrator. Look at the layers palette and tell me what you think. And uh, he, he, you know, I'm waiting for him on the phone to, to download it and the first program to load and open it up. And like me, within seconds, I just hear on the other end of the phone going, oh, my God. And then I hear, like, oh, my God. <laughs> and then he's going, you got to tell somebody, some of this was this is very sloppy. I can't believe what I'm seeing, you know. And I'm thinking, okay, so it's not just me, right? <laughs> And, uh, you know, he's going, you've got to tell somebody. And he was Mara, like, does, doesn't this seem surreal? I mean, you're, you're, you're recognized in the country as an expert on Adobe software. You're looking at, you're looking at a website of the United States government's White House website. You're looking at a document that the President of the United States has given to the world to say, look, this is my birth certificate. Does, did it seem surreal that, he, that this was actually happening? Uh, absolutely, but at the same time, I, you know, I'm not surprised because you know I've been following the stories on the short form, and I agree with most of the stuff that uh, has been put out there on, on the information on that as well. Um, you know, I, I I've seen numerous documents that he's been uh, forging, including his Secret Service, you know, uh, document, and uh, it. it didn't really come as a surprise, but it is surreal that this is so blatantly fake, and there's hardly any media coverage on it. Mm -hmm. You, you, know, uh, you, you said selective service. I mean, you said secret service. You meant selective service. Yes. Yes. yes select yes. his his uh, draft uh, registration was also fraudulent. Right. Correct. Yes. Uh, sorry like his that. social security number. Yes. I've yes. had I've had a, a number of of licensed private investigators on this program who have all sworn that Obama is using a Social Security number issued to a man born in 1890 who lived in Connecticut. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, you know, I don't doubt that that's true. <laughs> I mean, from what I've seen come out of this White House, you know, nothing surprises me. But, it, you know, it, what surprises me is the lack of coverage, you know, to report this. Well, the media is in on the cover-up. Yeah. The national media is part of the criminal operation. Absolutely. The, the day that this was released, uh, one of the things when he's sitting there telling me, you know, I need to contact somebody, you know, uh, one of the, the people that I contacted was uh, my local Fox News 40 station. And I decided not to approach it from the standpoint, you know, of somebody calling in and saying, you know, uh, look, this document is fake. Um, so I asked the, the lady that was taking the calls, I said, uh, is there somebody in um, your, one of your departments that has Illustrator that I can talk to? 
And she said, well, what's this about? And I said, well, I said, you know, I just would like somebody that has Illustrator, understands the program, open up the document in Illustrator. And regardless of what side of the argument you're on, if you know anything about, you know, Illustrator, there's no denying that this document is fake. And uh, so that's how I framed it. And, I, and then she just said, well, can I have your name and number? And uh, she took down the information. And... Uh, about an hour later, I got a call from a reporter wanting to know if they could come over and I could show them everything. And they came over to my house. They were in my house for two hours, over an hour which they were filming everything. I was pointing out all of the information, you know, of why this was, you know, not a legitimate document. Both the... the um, the uh, video guy and the reporter were not denying that it was fake. In fact, their mouth was hanging over it how sloppy it was done, too. They were, couldn't believe that, you know, um, that they're going, couldn't anybody else see this? And I'm going, absolutely. But, you know, average people who don't know what they're looking for might not download the document, might not, you know, uh, know what to look for if they did. I said, but once you know what you're looking for, you know, it's, it's really obvious to see. And uh, they're asking me all these questions over an hour worth of filming. When it came time to actually doing the news report, they uh, aired um, Obama, you know, laughing and showing, here's my document, you know, you know, of course there's going to be naysayers, you know. And then when it came time to, in, you know, show my portion of it, they introduced me as the skeptic, and they just said, well, and there's still some skeptics, and they didn't show any of the stuff that I explained. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm thinking that's typical, you know, that sums up the media, you know, so... That's because there is an editor at the TV station who right. reports to the news controller in Washington. And there is, listen, I, I have been told, uh, I have been told that, that um, high-level editors in television stations have, have confessed, have openly said in private to, to people that there is there is some clearinghouse in Washington that certain news stories have to be cleared through wow. as national security. And so that's what happened. There was an editor who was told, uh, no, that story does not go out. It's okay. finished. It's over. So, well, Mara, let's talk about, let's take a, a few minutes. Uh, tell us, it, it, in your professional uh, expertise, what did you see? Show well, us, tell us what you actually saw that told you this is a fraudulent document. Okay. Um, in, in just overall looking at it, you know, even without the Illustrator program, if you just open it up in a PDF, you know, uh, reader program, uh, when you zoom in at high levels and look at the text up, you know, at extremely close levels, um, you can see all kinds of inconsistencies, and, and that's the biggest clue. I, I keep using that word, and, you know, I don't know if people understand what I mean about, you know, inconsistency, but anytime there's an inconsistency, that's a clue that this document wasn't, you know, from one source. Um, and if you zoom in, just the, the biggest uh, uh, place to start is if you look at the certificate number and you zoom in really close, uh, anywhere from like a 350, 400, percent or higher, you can see it, in which the last number has a different quality to it than all of the numbers that are in front of it. And this number is, the birth certificate number is 10641. One. Right, so it's the last number one uh, that's in that number. And it, you're saying the one is different yes. from the 1064. Correct, correct. All right, and I'm uh, looking, I'm looking at it at a, at a, Image has blown up, and I clearly see what you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. The There's one, the one, the the last one is very solid. The, the, well, actually, the last one, if you're looking really close, is um, when you say solid, you're probably referring to what's known as the term is called anti-aliasing, where you have uh, a smooth transition on the line, so it looks smooth. Mm -hmm. Whereas the other numbers have a very jagged, yes. uh, what's known as a bit-mapped edge. Yes, that's okay. what I mean. Okay. Uh, but as far as the color goes, there's an inconsistency in that, too. The, the other letter, the other numbers, rather, have a solid black color, and the one that has the anti-lasing has what I refer to as noise. 
um, where you can see different tones in the pixels within it. Uh, one one pixel, you know, might look solid black, but the next the one next to it might have kind of a light gray color. Yeah, know? and I'm I'm looking at a um, I'm looking at a printout. I'm not, I'm not online right now. I'm looking at a printout, and so this is all in black and white. But that's exactly what I'm seeing. the The other numbers, uh, the the one zero six four. Are very dark black. The solid but, black, no no pixelation in the colors. But the last numeral one is more of a kind of a gray. Right, right, and 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 the, the, because there's different colors of black and gray tones that are making it up, and you can see that when you zoom in. All right. So what does that tell you? Uh, that it, that there's from different sources. You know that they're they're not all from the same source. This was you know composited from different sources, and you can see that throughout the document, not just in in the uh, number, the certificate number, but if you uh, scroll through, you know, at high zoom level again, you can see that in various locations. Um, one of the areas, like his birth date, you can see that in the number four is a solid black with the bitmap jagged edge, and then the um, comma has the anti-aliasing and the noise. Um, you can also see on, if you zoom in the August part, uh, there's a, a solid, I can't tell if it's green or gray color in the center of the G, uh, but then the rest of the text has a white, um, uh, what I call like a halo effect around it, which is also an indication that there's been editing too, that, that halo effect. Uh, that is around all of the text. Um, another interesting area that I find uh, definitely an indication that there was uh, uh, tampering here is if you compare the boxes 6D with 7E, uh, both of them contain a yes-no box. Do you see where I'm talking? Are you looking at the document? Yes. Okay. Uh, the 6D yes box has got the solid black X, and the 7E box has the pixelated. Yes, very X. clear. Yeah. It's very um, obvious. And, and the letters surrounding the pixelated one uh, on the question are also pixelated, indicating that they had to change those letters because, you know, to, to coincide with what they were putting in there. And here's the other interesting part. On 7E, right above the box that doesn't have an X, the no box, if you zoom in really close, you can see that the D and I above that box have been exactly duplicated from other Ds and Is in, in the text. Uh, I can tell you exactly where it comes from. The I over that box on the word judicial, the I comes from the word inside above it. It looks at pixel for pixel. It's exactly a duplicate. So, so they, they were actually moving individual letters around. Right, because I'm, what I'm guessing probably happened there, that D and that I that's over the box, the X used to be in that box, and the X probably overlapped those letters. So in order to make that box look empty, they had to duplicate the letters from other places in, in the document. Okay, Amar, for, with, with this printed copy that I have in front of me, in, in sections D and E, uh, the question is, is place of birth inside city? If no, give judicial district, yes or no? And then um, E is, is residence inside city uh, or what is it here? Town, town limit. Town, town limit, if, if no, give no, judicial give district. district. Okay, in D... In the word judicial, the C is different from judicial in in, in box E. Is Correct. that correct? Yes, and another indication they're probably moving letters. These around. are completely different C's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 that's the sort of thing. Like especially those boxes, the differences meaning that if there's a difference in quality between one box and the other, chances are it's because they're moving stuff around. You know. Um, they're getting it from different sources, you know, copying and pasting and, you know, pretty much compositing the document the way they want it to yes. be. Yes. I, I had Paul Irie on the program who owned and operated a uh, an, a graphic design agency in outside of New York City, New Jersey, for decades. I mean, he had some, his agency, uh, some of his clients were, were major 
corporations such as uh, Montgomery Wards and AMP grocery stores. You know, this was back in the 60s and 70s. And, uh, and uh, you know, he said the same thing. He said, look, in order for this birth certificate to have been typed using a manual typewriter, right. he said they had to, they had to use multiple manual typewriters to type one document. Right. In I've order actually, to get this many different fonts. I've actually seen some um, people that are trying to, you know, debunk everything that I've written actually say that, you know, this, well, I had, there was one guy posting on some site that was actually saying that that the difference in uh, what's known as kerning, the spacing between letters, you mm-hmm. know, uh, the, the difference of kerning could happen when, you know, people type really fast. And that's the most ridiculous argument I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> but, and, or maybe, then, maybe, the, maybe the office clerk was typing and then got a phone call and then uh, she took the... Uh, the birth certificate out of one typewriter and walked right. it down to another office and, and, and inserted exactly. it and then typed a couple more words and then carried it to another and office. Exactly. And the reason they did that is because in 1961 they knew that this birth certificate was going to be special. Yes, <laughs> yes. It was uh, Baby Obama's birth certificate. So every typewriter in the building was used <laughs> in a historical event. Right. There we go. We solved it. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you, Mara, for being on the program. We have now <laughs> solved the, the the question of why so many typewriters were used. <laughs> so yes, yes, it's yes. kind of like a presidential signing. You know, when the president will sign uh, documents with, you know, a hundred different ink pens, you know. Right. So they did it with Obama's birth certificate. They had presidential typing event. Right, right. And, and yeah, they, yeah, they had some sort of contest, you know, who could get the most <laughs> amount of different letters in this document as possible. Um, well, the, this forgery is so ridiculous. We're making jokes about it. I, know. I mean, the Mossad well, didn't do well, this, folks. Did, the Mossad would. The Mossad would never have their name put to something like this. Well, what's even more ridiculous is that there's people actually using those arguments to debunk what it is I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the 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 thing that I keep can't get past too is you know with every argument that they try to use debunking saying that I think the, the initially started out saying that you know all that can happen with OCR software um, and you know of course OCR has been debunked as you know been used on this document so now they're moving to different things but with every argument that they use they still can't get past the fact too that in 1961 if you're using a typewriter when you go to the next line the it automatically goes to the left margin and you can see on, and I always use is, is uh, the example to compare to is there's that Nordic um, birth certificate yes. that's out there. You're talking about the Nordic twins, the, the, the family last name Nordic. Correct. Uh, that they posted what a birth certificate from Hawaii should look like in 1961. And when you look at this document, which, by the way, I also write in my report that I think when they did this document, they used the Nordic document as a template on how it should look. And uh, when you look at the Nordic document, you can see that most of the items uh, have been, you know, completely got a perfectly lined up left margin, just as I'm saying with a typewriter. Uh, Obama's left margin is all over the place. Uh, you know, they don't, you, you don't have people typing in an office, you know, all these birth certificates. And again, for Obama's, because they know it's going to be special, you know, that all of a sudden they're, they're spacing in, because it's, it doesn't even look like they're set tabs, you know, standard tab set. It looks like, you know, according to the way they, they constructed this document, that, you know, they would have to do several different spaces, you know, and I'm sure maybe even the spacing's off. Mara, was was the in your estimation, is the forger a novice in using Adobe? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I, and I always say this. I, I've said it in in my report. I've said it in other interviews. I always think that whoever did this fancied himself, you know, an expert. Possibly, he knew enough to be dangerous, but not enough to cover his tracks. Is is what I always say. Okay, it's it's one thing to okay. I, Separate it, uh, a novice forger and a, and someone who's novice in, well, in, I, in in Adobe software. You're saying that the person who did this isn't even very good in Adobe. He probably thinks he is. He probably in his own mind thinks he is. Um, you know, there's a lot of people. I I have come across 
I can't tell you in in, in my um, couple decades of working with the program here how many people uh, take a few courses, you know, at college in in Photoshop or whatever software it is, that, and they consider themselves experts. And and I can't tell you how much they don't know. <laughs> Mara, why why would Obama? If he is committing a criminal act, which I am convinced he is a he is a, a criminal, he's a liar. Uh, why would he? Why would he use such an amateur to do this? Well, I, you know, I've heard Corsi say on this topic, and and I tend to agree with him. You know, it's not like the White House can you know advertise for you know expert forger. <laughs> you know? So, I, I and I. I kind of have a theory in my own mind, too, which, you know, I do believe that uh, Obama tends to um, have dictatorship-like qualities. And what I mean by that is, you know, that uh, if you look at many of the history of dictators and stuff like that, they tend to have a, a very strong paranoia uh, a component to their personality. And so they they stay within their inner circle for everything. And... I think that this is what probably went on here as well. They, you know, he's he's going to stay within his inner circle, find somebody within his circle that knows about the programs, and you know, let them fly with it. Uh, he's not going to want to, you know, go outside of that circle to get somebody that knows something about the program to do it. Well, well compare com- compare this to Richard Nixon's, um, you know, his infamous group called the Plumbers. Uh, the the you know, the ex-CIA guys that, you know, G. Gordon Liddy and others, um, you know, that broke into the uh, to the Democratic National Committee's office in the Watergate building. Okay, All right, those guys were pros at what they had done. I mean, they, you know, but Nixon, Nixon attempted for several years to cover up that criminal act, and it eventually brought down his presidency. Correct. In this case... Obama didn't even use a professional. Well, and you've got to also understand that within his inner circle, okay, because I, I do believe that somebody within his inner circle is doing this, but within that inner circle, most of the people that he surrounds himself with are not really familiar with American history or American lifestyles. I mean, you know... Good point. It's, you know, they're... This is somebody that's not familiar with, you know, our history of working with a typewriter, not, you know, the history of, you know, how things are done. <laughs> you know, uh, even the, you know, the race of Father African, you know, that wouldn't have been the option. In it would have been Negro. Right. But somebody not familiar with our history is not going to know that, you know. Um, Which tells us it's, it's, a, it's a young person. That, too. I do think that there is a young component. Who had well. no idea about manual typewriters, what it was like, what was it like to be in a government office building in 1960-something. You know, it was... Right. I mean... <laughs> yeah, and, and just to, just to uh, you know, educate any listeners out there that might not be familiar with typewriters, too, I mean, because, like I said, I've you know, heard the argument about how, you know, spacing can be altered by speed typing, you know. Just to let them know that with typewriters... Um, they were monospaced, which means that uh, every letter was allotted the exact same amount of space, regardless of what the letter was. So a, a thin letter I would still have the same amount of space allotted to it as a thicker letter like W or something. Mar- uh, I want to ask you about the, are there misspellings? Yes. Uh, <laughs> funny you should ask. Um, yeah, in the stamp, and you would think that an official stamp had been, you know, spell checked, <laughs> which apparently, um, you know, the stamp down at the bottom for Alvin Anaka uh, has the word uh, T X E instead of T H E in the stamp. Okay, Alvin Onaka was the Hawaii Hawaii State Register at the time. Correct. All right, Correct. and there is a misspelling in the stamp, the official stamp. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I don't think he was the state register at the time of the birth. He was probably the state register at the time of the release of this copy. Okay. Of the birth certificate. All right, but there there is a misspelling in the official stamp Correct. on the document. Correct. And, and that so that means every document stamp 
by Mr. Onaka has the misspelling in it. Correct, and, and there isn't. The other stamps that, you know, they show stamps of uh, uh, Alvin Onaka on other documents, and there is no misspelling. Um, and if you look at the document, too, there's evidence that the letters, and I'm not sure why, but there, maybe because they had, like, a copy of it and it wasn't very clear, and so they altered it. But it looks like the letters surrounding that word uh, has also been, you know, it's got a different quality again. Okay, is it true that there's a smiley face on the document? Yeah, there is on the, the A. Uh, there's a smiley face in Alvin, which isn't on any of the other stamps as well. It, the A in the name Alvin, Alvin. and yeah. I'm looking at it right now. It's yeah. the When you do a close-up of A, there's a smiley face. Why yeah. is there a smiley face? I have no idea. Uh, I know Corsi uh, theorizes that, you know, it might be uh, the forger's way of just having fun with the document. So he was, he was not only was he uh, a, an, um, a poor forger, he was an arrogant little punk. Yeah. I, I actually think I see the arrogance in the signature of the local register in the form itself, uh, Box 21. Um, which many people have also noticed uh, that the the signature is U K L Lee, which first of all I would like to ask the question: How many people would sign their names with just initials, and how many people would have that many initials? <laughs> is that ukulele? Yeah, and if you say it quickly, fast, it's ukulele, which I think is a joke name too, as well. I, I think this is another instance. There's where nobody named ukulele. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> So uh, I have no proof of that, but that's just a theory, you know, so I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, going back to the the misspelling of, of the, T-H-E, in, okay. in the official stamp of the Hawaii State Register, Alvin Onaka, right there is enough to get a conviction. Right there. I want to see, Mr. Onaga, every document you've stamped in the yeah. last five years that has the misspelling smiling in it. Smiling and a smiley face and the misspelling. The, yeah, and I want, to see you, I want to see you sign your name with your hand, and I want to put you that little smiley face in your A. Well, you know, just on that note alone, too, I'd like to also make the point that, uh, you know, don't they, doesn't everybody always warn us that, you know, when we're getting... Um, hoax emails, uh, scams, sure. you know, whatever, that one of the first tip-off signs to look for is misspelling. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and here we have a misspelling in an official document that's supposed to be his, you know, birth certificate. And So you think this is a subconscious uh, admission of what's going on? For who? You mean for Obama? No, the forger, the forger. forger. Not even realizing he was, he was, uh, you know, I mean, Colombo would have nailed this guy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hell, uh, 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 it would have been a five-minute Columbo movie. It had been <laughs> over. They couldn't even make a movie out of this thing. Columbo would say, what the heck? Is it good? I got him already. I'm thinking that who's, who's the deputy for Andy? Uh, uh, Barney. Yeah, Barney. Yeah, Barney. I think Barney could, you know. Yeah, Barney get a conviction on this one. <laughs> but the FBI, the FBI can't do anything. Oh, no. The, where's the FBI? Where's the federal courts? Where are the federal judges? Where is the United States Justice Department? FBI, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to put a bag over your head. You know, and, and as far as the, to answer, you know, the, uh, the email that I was discussing earlier about the, the congressman, you know, uh, I or maybe I can't remember if I had this discussion with you off air or on air, um, but the congressman aide that was telling me that everybody knows it's fake, but basically nobody wants to do anything about it because, you know, they're afraid of being taken seriously. I you you had a congressional aide admit to you that everybody in Washington knows it's a fake? Yeah, yeah, in an email. And she said, but unfortunately, her exact words were something to the line, I'm paraphrasing, that uh, because of his preempting any naysayers, that there's conspiracy theories, that everyone on the Hill is pretty much afraid of, you know, speaking out because they wouldn't be taken seriously. So in Alice in Wonderland, if you say conspiracy theory, that 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 just locks up everybody's brain and they can't deal with reality. Correct. correct. They have a brain freeze. Correct. And 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 I just thinking to myself, they have no idea that the opposite would be true. I mean, not only would they be taken seriously, but I, I honestly get a sense that the majority of the people in this country not only know it's fake, they're craving to hear somebody speak out about it. They, they need the closure 
to hear this. Well, there's millions of us who haven't drank the Kool-Aid. Correct, correct. We still have our thinking faculties working. Yeah, you know, when I went to, um, I, I went to uh, Washington, D.C., World Net Daily um, flew me out there for um, doing a press conference. And on my travels, uh, getting just even uh, a ride to the airport, you know, I took a shuttle, and in the shuttle van there was, you know, conversation going around, you know, the small talk, you know, where are you traveling to, you know, what are you going for? Uh, when it came around to me, you know, I, I said, well, I'm going to Washington, D.C., and they said, um, what are you going there for? And I said, um, well, I'm going for a press conference. You know, I kind of was hesitant to, to tell the information because I didn't know, you know, what the sentiment was in the, the, the van. And... Uh, so they're going, well, what are you going to a press conference for? And I said, well, you won't laugh if I tell you, you know, because kind of like the congressman, I'm thinking, you know, there might be some people in there that might uh, not like what I have to say. And they're, they're going, no, you got our attention now. So I told them that I was going there to discuss the fact that uh, Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate wasn't uh, legitimate. And the explosion of interest in this story, and, and on a positive note, I mean, everybody in the van was just all of a sudden I had their attention, and they're all, you know, just dumbfounded and glued. You know? Nobody laughed at you. Nobody laughed. They all wanted to hear everything I had to they say. They didn't stop the van and throw you out on the tarmac. No. In fact, the driver said, hell, if I could, I'd drive you to D.C. myself. I'm so proud to meet you. <laughs> and, and, and I honestly think that this would be the response for the congressman if they would just have the guts to, to speak out. It's well, the look, they, the they, live, they live in Alice in Wonderland, Bill, in Washington, D.C., and all they worry about is what will the news media say about us? That's yeah. all they care about. What will the news media say? Who, and, and who always, gives a flip what the news media I, says? I call my congressman frequently, and I always tell them, you know, if you don't have the media's approval, you're doing something right. <laughs> That's right. You don't care about what the media wants you to say. Um yeah, it's. I don't know what else to do. I do everything I can uh, to get the word out. And uh, well, I'm. I'm going to tell you, we're, and we're going to stay on this. I. I. I uh, I'm so uh, glad that you um, uh, have come forward and you have stated on the record uh, as a professional, as an expert in Adobe Illustrator and Adobe software that this, without a doubt, is a forgery. Uh, if if you were, uh, if you were subpoenaed to a federal court. Would you testify as an expert witness? Yeah, I would. Yeah. You, you'd put your name on the line, your career on the line. You'd say, uh, as an expert witness, I would categorically state that this is a forgery. I would. I would. You know, people say, aren't you afraid about speaking out? And I think to myself, I'm more afraid about not speaking out. What, what would happen to this country, you know, if there aren't people that, you know, come out and say what the truth is? Would Would you have any question in your mind that in a federal courtroom, if you went on record stating as an expert witness that, that the Obama birth certificate is a forgery, would you have any question in your mind about whether Obama could bring forth a witness equal to your expertise that could refute what you're saying? Well, I'm sure he, you know, he could always bring somebody out that could refute what I'm saying, but there's just so much here that would refute the refuter. Does that make sense? No, I, yeah, I mean, I know people can deny, but I'm yeah. talking about proving it. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, because I'm looking at, I'm looking at your evidence. Well, it's like, well, how do you dispute it? Well, let, let me let me give you some some uh, arguments that are already out there. I mean, you know, some people are trying to say that you can um, already get a lot of layers. Uh, by um, the compression settings when you save uh, the document. Now, actually, when I compress this document, the layers actually go away. Uh, but I have tested it out on um, other documents. I've scanned in documents and then just try saving as a PDF with compression, open it up in Illustrator to see what I see in layers. Um, there are layers. Compression does produce layer with some of the documents I've done. But here's the big difference. The layers that are produced when you do it that way uh, don't have any kind of rhyme or reason to it. It's the computer trying to decide where there's areas that look similar, and it you know all of a sudden will group it into kind of like blocks, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, putting it together. Right. But the computer doesn't change the fonts. Right. 
the computer doesn't put a smiley face well, in a com- signature. The computer also, unlike this document, when you look at the layers on this document, the, do- the layers are smart. They're not, you know, randomly generated by a computer. You have one layer that's the entire background, one layer that's the text. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the computer on the other examples that I'm, I'm talking about where I tried it out, it couldn't differentiate between the text and the background. If it took a block of a chunk of the document and put it on a layer, the whole chunk is there. Do you understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, 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 there's no way that it got layers, you know, via the compression. Well, Mara, we're going to stay on it. I know you are, and, and I am sending this uh, program uh, to members of the U.S. Congress. Uh, there are people in Washington who are asking for more information. Uh, slowly, quietly, uh, there are people in Washington starting to admit that this is so obvious that we cannot ignore it any longer. And um, again, I'm calling on the FBI. Do your job. Do your job. I was, look, you know, I grew up in the 50s and 60s as a kid. It was a time when when boys and girls were told to to respect the FBI, I've lost all respect for the FBI. I've lost it all. They are they're a bunch of political patsies. They will not uphold the law. Look at the ATF. The ATF, a bunch of gun runners. I mean, yeah. our we have become a land of lawlessness. We oh. used to be the land of the rule of law we are now a land of lawlessness and if we don't get a grip on this thing really fast we're going to be a banana republic well i think the answer is smaller government and to ha- not have government agencies run things to have a private sector you know fill that role. that's right that's yeah. right we need a renaissance in this country of constitutional government but number one before we do anything we've got to we've got to seize control uh, of of this runaway regime in Washington, if they can get away with putting an imposter in the White House, then our, we've lost our country forever. We'll never, ever again know for certain that the man in the White House is a legitimate American citizen because they they have succeeded now for over three years in propping up an imposter. This man ought to be in prison he is a criminal. He is a liar. He is a deceiver. He is a mac daddy. He is a pimp. He's a he's a street hustler, and he needs to go to prison. You're you're singing to the choir. <laughs> I know, I know. Listen, Mara, I appreciate you being on the program. My guest, Mara Zabest, and uh, we are going to stay on this issue. Thank you, Mara. Appreciate you're, you being on True News. You're welcome. Thank you. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.